Hello and welcome once again to Home Bible Study. From my home to your home, this is Robert Haller, thanking you for taking the time to observe this video. And always a thank you to those that subscribe, view, comment, and respond. Today we're going to look at why Christians follow in Christianity the wrong Jesus. Now, this is quite a statement to make, I'm sure, and I just ask people before they get all wound up uh, and want to throw stones and sticks and call me all kinds of names, uh, please view this video because this statement is going to be proven correct and right when it is given to you from God's word and not mine. So I ask that before you pass judgment to please observe this video, then you can make up your own mind as to what it is you wish to believe. Now, a statement like this <clears throat> will cause a lot of controversy. And the first thing people will run to me and say, well, now, in Christianity, we follow Jesus. And we follow Jesus of his earthly ministry. And they will run a scripture with that. And we'll show all that uh, throughout the study. But that's, I hear that a lot. Well, we follow the Christianity of Jesus. And it's of the Bible, of Jesus of the Bible. So for me to make a statement like that, to provide a study that says that Christians follow the wrong Jesus in Christianity, if you will. Because we're going to look at the first one that um, says something about, we're going to look at it first from Christianity's uh, standpoint or viewpoint or doctrine whatever you call it. And then we're going to look at the scripture that they're going to use to promote this. And we don't, don't need to use a lot. We're going to just do the ones that pertain to the uh, sub videos title, you know, those that follow the wrong Jesus of Christianity, those Christians. Because he said something very important in the book of Matthew, in chapter 16. And he said in verse 16, or excuse me, chapter 16, verse 24. And this was Jesus talking to his 12 disciples when he was foretelling them of his passion. He says in verse 24, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. It's right there. It's in, uh, for lack of a better term, black and white. It's in scripture. Jesus said it himself. So why would I present a video that says something that Christians follow the wrong Jesus in Christianity today? That's the key word, today. In this, revel in this age of grace, uh, dispensation of the grace of God that we are in today, they're following the wrong Jesus. Now, we want to look at this verse, and we want to apply the who, what, where, when, and why, and rightly divide the word of truth, as Jesus Christ himself commands us through Paul. Now, if we look at them, let's look at the, the five W's, shall we? First of all, who was this said to? It's very distinct. You can't add to it. Don't put the Gentiles in there. Don't put in the body of Christ church. Leave scripture alone. Read it carefully. What does it say in verse 24? Then Jesus said unto his disciples, ladies and gentlemen, his followers, his apostles, who he was talking to. Look at the content. So who was it to? It was to the, who, the uh, 12 apostles of the nation of Israel, his Jews. When? It was during his earthly Ministry, the gospel of the kingdom, where it was under the law. Why was it given? It was given so that they would know that they had to follow him in order to have salvation. 
to believe on him, that they would have to pick up their cross and deny themselves to endure unto the end, because that's what Jesus Christ tells them. You must endure unto the end to have salvation. You can read about that in Matthew chapter 24. And that has to do with soul salvation. And this was when? This was also in times past, before the crucifixion. And we covered now who, what, where, when, and why. And if you leave it there and look at the content, it very much he was talking to his Jews, the 12 apostles, who were of what? The nation of Israel. And he said, follow me. So, see, modern Christianity today that claim to be in the body of Christ church now, in the age of grace, no less, that's for us today also. It says right there, to follow him. I follow Jesus myself. I hear that a lot. And I, and I, when I talk to people or mention something about following which Jesus, they'll tell me right away, oh, I follow the Jesus of the Bible. And, and, and they'll point to the verse like this. And they will adamantly stand, stand and keep their stance because Christianity tells them that. But Christianity fails to tell them. This is under the law, see. And Christianity fails to tell them you can't mix law and grace. But nevertheless, they still do it. And the Christians of today believe it. Now, we're not going to get into who a Christian is and was, because I have done multiple videos on it. You can go back and check and look at them. It's very plain in Scripture what Scripture says, who Christians were, when they were, what they were, where they were. When you put all the five W's together there, you'll understand who the Christians were in the Bible. They were Jews, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe a big surprise to a lot of you Christians out there today. There was no Gentile Christians in the Bible. And there's no such thing as Christianity in the Bible. It does not exist, ladies and gentlemen. And yet look at all of the religions, all of the denominations, non-denominations that put themselves under the realm of Christianity, a man-founded religion. It's not under the Word of God. It's not in the Word of God. So we leave it out because it's from some other place, isn't it? It's from the doctrine of man. It's just for the traditions of man which become doctrine of demons because Satan is behind it. Now we looked at why Christianity will tell you you must follow Jesus Christ, pick up your cross, deny yourself, and follow him. And they will point to scriptures like this. Now it's very interesting because if you supposedly follow Jesus Christ of the Bible and you do this, I want to take you to a scripture and ask you that are viewing this script, this video, and I hope you have your Bibles open, by the way. I'm going to give you a verse that Jesus Christ not only told his nation of Israel, his people, his gospel of the kingdom, something very special. And everything he said was special, but this is found in the book of John, chapter 12, 13, Verse 20, now I want to ask you that are viewing this video that think I am a false teacher, a heretic, or whatever you might think because of the statement or the subject matter that I am showing you in this video, you disagree with totally. Look what verse 20 says. I'm going to read it slowly to you, and I want you to read it to yourselves. Verse 20 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that has received Whomsoever I send receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Now this is Jesus Christ's very own words. Let me repeat the verse. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Now we know from Scripture, Jesus did send the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. And they were supposed to receive the Comforter. But Jesus Christ did something after the cross, did he not? He sent somebody after the cross. What do you Christians that follow Christianity and the Jesus of Christianity do with this verse when you come across the writings of Paul, when Paul says something that you might take is an outlandish, blasphemy thing to say. And where do we find that one? 
Well, let's go to chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, ladies and gentlemen. He says in verse 1 of chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, Be ye followers even, be ye followers of me, even as I am also of Christ. Let me say that verse again to you. This is Paul telling you today. It say, he says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. What do you do with that verse? And we know, ladies and gentlemen, if you believe what you read in John chapter 13, verse 20, and you just read chapter 11, verse 1 of 1 Corinthians, you know this is a commandment of Jesus, just like it was back in that day. How do we know it's a commandment of Jesus Christ? Well, you're not very far away. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and read verse 37, and I'll read it to you. It says, if any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. And people were running, running right away and saying, well, you follow a man for heaven's sake. That's blasphemy. You're a heretic. You're a false teacher. You follow a man. You don't follow Jesus Christ. Yes, we follow Paul as to what he wrote, as to what Jesus Christ told him to write, because Jesus Christ is a spirit. We are spiritual. I just confirmed that to you by reading verse 37. I do acknowledge that the things that Paul says to me are commandments of the Lord. You see, Christianity has a problem today just like the Pharisees and Sadducees had in Jesus' day. They won't accept Paul today, see. They want to call Paul a blasphemer. They want to call him a false prophet. They want to call those of us that follow Paul as he followed Jesus Christ also the same. They want to do away with us because it's not scriptural. Well, I'm just reading everything to you here in scripture. Again, you make up your own minds when you read this stuff and look it up. Because I want to tell you something else that's very important. Open your Bibles to the book of Romans, ladies and gentlemen. Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. This is what it says in verse 8. Now, this is Paul writing to you and me today in the doctrine for the body of Christ church, ladies and gentlemen, in the age of grace, the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in today that's found in the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ from Romans to Philemon, the doctrine for the body of Christ church following Paul as a man, the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He says in verse 8, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Well, who were the fathers? Isaac Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The circumcision, the Jew, ladies and gentlemen, it plainly says here in Scripture, Jesus Christ was a minister unto the Jews. He was not a minister and never did minister unto the Gentiles anywhere in Scripture until after the ascension of Jesus Christ into heaven. Then he became the teacher, giving Paul the authority to be the minister of the gospel. Not before. Look what it says in the same chapter, by the way. It says here, and we're going to start in verse 15 of the same chapter. Nevertheless, Paul says, Brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, verse 16, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Now, if you look back at verse uh, 8, he doesn't say, now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister unto the circumcision and the Gentiles. He doesn't say that. The Holy Spirit doesn't tell you that, does he? Yet you want to go around and you want to follow Jesus, myself, in the Old Testament, under the law. Under the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ is earthly, fleshly ministry. You want to follow and do everything that he does and say and follow the things and the teachings that he does. When you want to, and then you want to follow what 
Paul says, too, so you want to mix both of them. Paul's all of grace. Paul is nothing of the law. Jesus Christ was everything of the law because the law was not done out of the way yet, see. Christianity doesn't want you to know that. They won't teach you that. They'll keep you in bondage of the law and trying to mix in grace also. And it's not going to work. Because Jesus Christ's earthly ministry was a physical earthly ministry. How do we know that? That's what scripture says. Let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, ladies and gentlemen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And let's look what it says, <coughs> excuse me, in chapter 5. And we'll start in verse four, uh, 15. It says, well, let's start in verse 14. 14 says of chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then all were dead. Verse 15, And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. And here it is, verse 16. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, his earthly ministry, the Gospels of Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, the book of Hebrews through Revelation, but actually just through the book of Hebrews and First uh, and Second uh, First and Second Peter, First and Second, Third John, Jude, and James, but not the book of Revelation. Verse sixteen says, "Again, I'll reread it. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth, from here on out, know we him no more." No more after the flesh, ladies and gentlemen. So why does Christianity want you to follow the Jesus Christ in the Bible now of the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of Hebrews, the books of First and Second Peter, First and Second, Third John, Jude and James? Well, because that's Jesus of the Bible, you see. You have to follow all of Jesus. You can't pick and choose Jesus. Well, we can't pick and choose, but Jesus Christ did. You see, the cross came in. The cross made a great division of Scripture, which Christianity fails and will not recognize or teach as part of their doctrine. It gave us the times past, before the crucifixion, the law, Jesus Christ's earthly ministry. Then it changed to the but now. The but now of the cross is from his crucifixion, his ascension, and when the body of Christ church and doctrine came in when Paul was given the authority by the risen, glorified, justified, sanctified Jesus Christ to give the gospel of the grace of God to be saved by grace through faith. That came in. The law was abolished. The law was taken out of the way because it was contrary to us. The law was not contrary to those of the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ because they had to endure to the end. They had to keep the law. They had to get baptized. They had to work for their salvation. Here there's no works. And we can cover that because it says in Ephesians chapter 9, no works lest any man should boast. And we also know that the law was abolished because of what it says in the book of Galatians. And turn your Bibles to the book of Galatians right after 2 Corinthians and go to chapter 3 and look at verse 13. Verse 13 of chapter 3 of Galatians says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. It is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So when he took and was nailed to that cross, which is the same thing as a tree in Scripture, they're synonymous with one another, he took care of the law. And where else can you read about this? Well, keep there that in mind and go to the book of Colossians, right after Philippians, just before First and Second Thessalonians. And go to chapter 2 of Colossians. And let's read what it says in chapter 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwritings of ordinances, which means the law, ladies and gentlemen, look it up, that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Now, he never took the law out of the way for the gospel of the kingdom, see, ladies and gentlemen. He didn't nail that to the, that didn't happen until after 
he was nailed to the cross. So whatever he told the gospel of the kingdom people, his nation of Israel, his 12 apostles under the law, under the law was of the law. They had to abide by the law and they will be judged also by the law. We won't be. All the law does for us today is bring us to the knowledge of sin. That's all it does. So we don't have that curse under us anymore. We can't be cursed of God under the law. But yet Christianity doesn't want to accept that. And Christianity keeps telling their Christians that they should follow Jesus Christ of the Bible. To include the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as part of their doctrine for salvation. Then what do you do when you read something like this? You that are listening to this video, and hopefully you've listened this far so far. Go to the book of Galatians, ladies and gentlemen. And this is, has everything to do with those that are under the law and try to mix law and grace. They don't want to give up the, the law. They, they want them both, just in case. And we're going to start in chapter 5, verse 1. Chapter 5 of Galatians, verse 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. What is the yoke of bondage? It is the law. Look what happens if you continue to try to mix law and grace. Verse 2, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. We're talking spiritual here, ladies and gentlemen, spiritual. Keep that in mind. Verse 3 says, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. You break one law, you're condemned of all of them. Look at he says in verse 4, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whatsoever of you or whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. So if you try to mix law and grace, <clears throat> you're going to fall because you won't have grace in the first place because you're trying to be a Christian that follows Jesus Christ of Christianity. That's mixing law and grace, ladies and gentlemen. Look what it says in verse 5. For we through the Spirit, which is the Spirit of God here, wait for the hope of righteousness by one thing, ladies and gentlemen, faith. That's it. Faith. We don't worry about works. We don't worry about the law. That is not part and partial to us. See, Christianity, those, those Christians, you Christians that follow Jesus Christ of Christianity, don't realize that. You're not taught that. Oh, you'll say a lot of clever things. You'll say, oh, we don't have uh, salvation is by grace through faith. It is by the finished work of the cross. So why do you follow the Jesus Christ of the earthly ministry of the gospel of the kingdom? Why do you follow Christianity? When Christianity teaches you one thing, but adds a lot of other things, just in case. Because everything in the Gospels from, from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, and the book of Acts, of course, and the book of Hebrews through Revelation, is all for you, but it's also to you, according to Christianity, just like Genesis through Revelation. That is false teaching. That is wrong doctrine. Because of the separation of the divisions that the cross created. And we're told and we're commanded, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, how and why we should study the word of God by Jesus Christ himself. It is a commandment of God because Paul said it. And I acknowledge the things that Paul says unto me are commandments of the Lord. That makes me a spiritual follower of the spirits of Jesus Christ. Listening and following the man Paul that told us what Jesus told him. Whomever I send, if you receiveth him, Whomever I send, he said, I will receive you. What do you do when you reject Paul? When you look at just Christianity from the Gospels, lead Jim, you don't need anything else for your salvation. What happens? Because he said, specifically, in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15, he says, study. That's what we, got, we have to do. God commands us to study his word. To show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He tells us how to do it. And we know what the word of truth is because the Bible tells us that in the King James 1611 version. Go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. It gives you the definition of the word of truth. It is the gospel of your salvation. 
Does Christianity teach you that? No, Christianity, for the main part, goes and chooses other Bibles. Rewritten, retranslated, if you will. Many, many words added, many changed and left out. In fact, most of them, if it's not a King James, you will not find it rightly dividing the word of truth. Did you know that? It's not in there. It's hidden. It says to handle the word of God carefully. Well, that can mean anything to anybody. And that's what Christianity wants you to do because that fits Christianity's doctrine to make it out that Christianity is the doctrine for Jesus Christ of the Bible because they can put all the law and grace in there that way. <clears throat> do you see the dangers of that? If you do that, you'll end up with a false salvation. You know, and it's very interesting, too, that when we read in uh, Romans, let's go back to Romans chapter uh, 15 again, because I want to show you something here that a lot of people, when they read it, they probably don't realize it. But it says in uh, chapter 15, uh, verse 8, once again, he says, Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of whom? God. And who was Paul a minister of? The gospel. He was a minister of God, Jesus Christ. You see, God and Jesus Christ are one and the same. It is a title. It is the name Jesus Christ that he wants us to be with today in the age of grace. It's all about Jesus Christ. That is the title now that he assumes fully. Whether it's in the spirit, whether he sits on the throne. Whatever he does, he is fully God now, but he is referred to us as Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is his title. That is what he wants us to do, because where is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior? He's in heaven. What is he? He's a spirit. And remember, he told his nation of Israel, hey, God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in what? In spirit and in truth. Key words there, in spirit and truth. Now, why does Christianity and Christians follow the wrong Jesus? And yet they claim that they follow the, the Jesus of the Bible, see? It can be very confusing. And to those unlearned or those that are ignorant for whatever reason, will fall into that trap. Because Christianity as a religion now, founded by the flesh and blood of mankind, under the workings of Satan, will not compare spiritual things to spiritual. They want to mix spiritual and physical, see? And we don't do that in the body of Christ church. No way. Because of something in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter, yeah, and it's in chapter 2, I believe. Yes, it is. Because this is what we do in the spirit. It says in verse 13, actually we'll start in verse 12, because verse 12 talks about us that are saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ and are spiritual and have spiritual salvation by grace through faith. Verse 12 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but that spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given to us of God. And verse 12, uh, 13 says, which things also we speak in the words which man's wisdom teaches. But we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Ghost teaches. We're comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Christianity, as a religion, does tries to do both, see. They try to be of the flesh and of the spirit. But if they try to be a both, it's not going to work because they're going to end up in the flesh because it says what it says in verse 14. But the natural man received not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. They are hidden from you. Christianity hides them from you on purpose, by the way. Because you have to remember and you have to listen to somebody to tell you that the Christianity is founded by the flesh and blood of mankind. What is the flesh and blood of the natural man? It is sin. It is the knowledge of good and evil based on a lie. And that's what happens to people that claim to be Christians today and follow the wrong Jesus of Christianity. 
It's so plain. It's so apparent in Scripture. And yet, you will find people will never change their mind or they refuse to change their mind. I'm not out to change anybody's minds. I'm not out to convert anybody. I have no power to do that. All I can do is give you the truth of the word of God and give you the gospel that can save you. What you do with it is entirely up to you, ladies and gentlemen. And you only have two choices. You can either be obedient to the word of God or you can be disobedient to the word of God. There's no gray area with Jesus Christ. It's either all for him or all against him. And if you do not study the word of God the way God commanded you to do it, you'll never see this. And you will be taken under the lie of Christianity and be falsely known as Christians following the wrong Jesus Christ. It's wrong doctrine. It's false teaching. And when you have that combination, you will end up in hell, ladies and gentlemen, not for eternity, as some Christians teach. You're going to be in the lake of fire for eternity after the great white throne judgment, which you will stand before. So what do you do with that scripture uh, in John chapter 13? You that follow Jesus Christ of the Bible in your Christianity, calling yourselves Christians. What do you do with John chapter 13, verse 30? Excuse me, verse 20. What do you do with it? Do you just ignore it? I'm going to read it to you again. Let it soak in. He says in verse uh, 20, Verily, verily, or truthfully, truthfully, however you want to say it, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth not me, he that receiveth me, will receive him that sent me. And you don't want to receive Paul, see. You're no different than the Pharisees were in the Old Testament when they rejected Jesus Christ, a man claiming to be the Son of God, their Messiah. Well, you're failing to realize who Paul the Apostle really is here. He is the chosen apostle to give this gospel of grace to you and me today under the realm of the body of Christ church which is a gospel of the grace of God, which is a mystery of the revelation of Jesus Christ in the spirit after the finished work of the cross. If you deny it, if you don't want to have any part about it, Jesus Christ will never receive you and neither will God. Think about that, you Christians that are under the realm of Christianity, following the Jesus of Christianity. When the Bible says he will not receive you, neither will the one that sent him receive you because you deny it. Or you'll mix it. You'll say, oh, no, I don't deny Paul. Paul's part of our doctrine. You can't have both, ladies and gentlemen. That isn't the plan of God. When God created the vision of the cross, which he did, he gave you the times past, the but now, and the ages to come. That's in second. Uh, that's in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. You can read in verse 7, verses 11 and 12, and 13. It gives you right there the times past, the but now, and the ages to come. It's in scripture, but it's only given where? In the doctrine for the body of Christ. It was never known to those before. You that follow the Jesus Christ of the gospel of the kingdom, the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of Acts, Hebrews through Revelation, you that the one that you follow the most. It isn't, it isn't even in there. They don't know anything about it. You want to follow that Jesus, you better follow him while he was under the law because he changed something very drastically. He took the law out of the way. He took religion out of the way. Christianity is a religion. That should tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. It was the Jews' religion that sent him to the cross. But you want to follow Jesus Christ of the Bible. See, you want to follow the Jesus Christ of Christianity because Christianity tells you that is the Jesus of the Bible that we preach and teach. We'll give you all the passages. We'll mix them. We'll give you the, all the verses of Matthew, Mark, and John, all the verses of Acts, all the verses of Romans through Philemon, all the verses of Hebrews through Revelation. We'll give it all to you because it's all for you and all to you. No, it is not. Not according to the word of God, see, but according to your religion of Christianity, that is the way to go. The choice is yours. You can be freed from this. You can be in the liberty that kept us from the yoke of bondage, as he talked about. 
in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. You can have that free liberty. How can you have that? You have to be saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ. According to the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, which Jesus Christ preached unto Paul to preach to you and me. How do I know that? That's what the Bible says. Look at the uh, Romans chapter 16, ladies and gentlemen. Last chapter. Book of Romans. Look what it says, starting in verse 25. He says, Now to him that is of power, that's Jesus Christ, to establish you according to my gospel, Paul says. Paul was the only one given the authority of Jesus Christ to call it his gospel. The other 12 didn't dare call the gospel of the kingdom their gospel. That was Jesus Christ's gospel. This is Paul's gospel. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. You see, even the apostles didn't know about it. Jesus Christ never mentioned the revelation of the mystery during his earthly ministry. He only mentioned it to Paul through Romans, through Philemon, the one that you as Christians that follow the wrong Jesus of Christianity fail to recognize because he'll keep it hidden from you, even though it was hid from them in the past on purpose by Jesus Christ himself. But look what it says in verse 26. But now, that's in the but now of the cross, ladies and gentlemen, that great division is made manifest. It's made known. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of what? Faith. You see, it's all about faith after the cross. Until the body of Christ church is taken out of this world, it's all faith. It's grace. It's a gift of God. You see? Before they had to work for it. If you work for something, is that a gift? No, you work for it. When you don't have to work for something, you get it, that's a gift. And you don't have to repay it back. Everything is done. The finished work of the cross. The grace that Jesus Christ poured out is the grace, is the gift of salvation through faith. Where do you find this? You find this in 1 Corinthians, ladies and gentlemen. Open your Bibles, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, please. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also you are saved, verse 2. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain, this is what Paul has been preaching unto you. Whomsoever I send, well, I will receive. If you receive the one that I send, I will receive you, and so will the Father in heaven. Verse 3 says, For I delivered first of all unto you, which things which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. And verse 4, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That's your salvation, by grace through faith. And please, let's look at uh, the book of Ephesians, right after Galatians. You keep going to your right. And look what it says in chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. I've said these verses several times. I say them all the time. Verse 2, uh, here's what it says in verse 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. Verse 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So everything I've been telling you is from Scripture. It is backed up. It is proven positive truth, positive of God's Word, that what it is you've been shown in this video is God's Word and not mine. You see, if you're not spiritual, if you don't believe in the spiritual things, and you cannot compare spiritual things with spiritual Christianity will keep you in the natural man trying to give you a little bit of spiritual, a little bit of flesh, a little bit of spirit, a little bit of the law, a little bit of the spirit, a little bit of the natural man. Let's mix them all together. But they're like oil and water. You cannot mix them. You'll never have true salvation. If you continue calling yourselves Christians and following the wrong Jesus of Christianity, I'm going to warn you. Now, this is according to the word of God. Christ will profit you nothing. That's probably the most scariest thing I can think of if somebody told me that. And that's backed up by Scripture, ladies and gentlemen. 
You can have eternal life in the grace of God through Jesus Christ. It's a gift. All you have to do is believe. It doesn't take any work to believe. But you have to get over yourself. You see, you'll never leave as a Christian. You'll never say, I'm not going to be a Christian and not associate with Christianity. Well, I can't do that. You see, you're never going to come to this realization, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't, to give up everything that Paul gave up. Because we follow Paul as he followed Christ. In order to do that, we have to give up everything. And what do I mean by that? You have to give up everything you've ever known. Everything you've ever heard, everything you've ever believed, everything you've ever been taught, and everything you've ever told anybody else about your religion of Christianity, you must get rid of and get over yourself. Because he says, and this is Paul talking, once he was saved, he says, hey, this is the resume of Paul. He says, hey, once I'll tell you what, I had more confidence in the flesh than any man that ever lived. Because he says, and starting in verse 4 of chapter 3 of uh, Philippians, he says, Though I might have more confidence in the flesh, if any man thinketh he hath more, whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Look at verse 5. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew that he was, as touching the law of Pharisee. Verse 6. Con concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is of the law, blameless. Verse 7. But... What things were gained to me, those I count loss for Christ. Verse 8, yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. You Catholics, you're going to give up the Catholic Church? How about you Protestants? How about you Lutherans? How about you Baptists? How about all you denominational, non-denominational Christian churches that claim to be under the realm of Christianity and all you cults like the Latter-day Saints, uh, the uh, oh Jehovah Witness, on and on it goes. You're going to give it all up? You're going to call it dung? Of course you won't. You'll be ostracized by your community, by your religion. You'll be ostracized by your denomination. You'll be ostracized by your local church. You'll be ostracized by man. God forbid that uh, you say something like that and, and, and find out that you're following the wrong Jesus as a Christian in Christianity. You'll be laughing stock of your church. You won't do that. See, you don't have any difference. You're no different than the Pharisees and Sadducees and the Jews of Jesus Christ's earthly ministry. No different. Let me prove that to you. If you can't give up everything, if you cannot get over yourself and everything that, like I mentioned, you were taught and what you did, and what you said, and what you believed, and what you taught everybody else to be. You're just like the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the followers that tried of Judaism in Jesus Christ's day. Look at John chapter 12. As you start in verse 42 of John chapter 12, it says, verse 42, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him, but, because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Oh, my goodness, why? Verse 43, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Are you going to stand there and find that out at the great white throne judgment after you spend, I don't know how many thousands of years, maybe in hell? I don't know how long hell is going to exist before uh, the great white throne judgment. But I can tell you one thing. It's not going to be pleasant there, and it sure, for lack of a better term, is going to be a hell of a lot worse in the lake of fire. When you're going to stand in the great white throne judgment, and you're going to realize you appeased man, you appeased your religion of Christianity, you appeased your, appeased your local church, you appeased your own pastor, and your fellow members of your congregation by denying Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, and went along with Christianity, the Jesus of the Bible. The wrong Jesus. You, as a Christian, do have a place reserved for you at the Great White Throne Judgment. If you continue in your religion, you can get out of it. Time is short. It's only your time that matters. Did you know that? It's only your time that matters on this earth. It doesn't matter about your wife, your kids, or if you're a wife, the husband, and the kids, the grandkids, the grandparents. Your cousins, your relation, your friends, your neighbors, your church, and whatever. It doesn't matter. It matters to you. 
only about your salvation. Because your family, your church, your religion, your community, your friends, your relatives, they can't save you. Nobody can save you but Jesus Christ himself. But you want to deny that. So you want to deny the finished work of the cross. And why? So that you're appeased of mankind. God forbid that that should happen. But it does by the billions, ladies and gentlemen. Again, you do with this what you want. The, the war continues, ladies and gentlemen, on Christianity. And I will do this until the dying days of my life or the Lord takes me home or the rapture or, the, or we're caught up before. I'm not going to stop. Somebody has to take a stand and give you the truth at whatever cost to me. May I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? So be it. I'm ready to spend and I will be spent. For the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. That's Quran. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15. And the other one was uh, Galatians chapter 4, verse 16. The choice is yours, ladies and gentlemen. But always remember this. Your choice carries consequences. And these consequences of this particular choice will be eternal. Choose wisely. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you listening. This is Home Bible Study, from my home to your home. This is Robert Holler thanking you. And always remember, until next time.